What is up guys, it is Joe here from Joe Talks Wrestling and as I am sure you are all aware, this week and next week marks the return of the WWE Draft. Now if you don't know what the Draft is ladies and gents, it is essentially Raw and Smackdown with their two separate rosters trading wrestlers in between. Now we've had in recent years, we've had the wild card rule, we've had the superstar shakeup, sort of rendered the draft a little bit obsolete. Uh, the previous proper draft I can think of was 2016. I know we did do a little bit of a draft uh, the end of last year, literally this time last year when SmackDown moved to Fox, but it wasn't really a massive one. But this time the draft returns. So what I'm going to be doing today, guys, is basically fantasy booking and giving six picks for each show, Raw and SmackDown, no NXT. Apparently NXT were initially meant to be part of the draft, but uh, WWE actually took down a tweet that had NXT in it and then reposted it without. So going off of that tweet alone, I'm not including NXT. So what I'm doing, ladies and gents, is five superstars and then one women for each show, one for Raw, one for SmackDown, and so on and so forth. So, the women's division, the reason I'm only doing one for each is because the women's division and the tag division in particular, uh, I'm not even changing up any tag teams. The tag division at the moment, in my opinion, needs to be unified. They need to get rid of the Raw Tag Team Championships, get rid of the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, and overall have one WWE Tag Team Champions because the tag division is so bare. There's so many teams that are injured. A few teams got released. You know, just unify the divisions. I'm not diving into tag divisions. And the women's division, you know, it, it feels like they're just focusing on their key storylines. So Sasha and Bayley uh, are the only people getting attention on SmackDown. Uh, I know we're getting Carmella vignettes and stuff and, you know, other little things, but that's the main one. And then on Raw, you've only got Asuka and whoever she's facing. So the women's division sort of a bit sucky at the moment as well. So I'm only doing one pick for them. But without further ado, ladies and gents, I'm just waffling at this point. Let's get right into the first one. So we are doing Monday Night Raw first. Wrestlers who I think should come from SmackDown to Raw. Let's get right into the first pick. Okay, so coming in first, this one was a given. It is the Monster Among Men, Braun Strowman. Now, Braun has been competing on Raw Underground. Um, whatever happened there. He's been competing on Raw Underground. He got an exhibition match this previous Monday on Raw. I think the next logical step is for him to be fully traded back to Raw. Obviously, since losing the Universal Championship, Braun Strowman hasn't really been doing anything. He's been in limbo. If you keep him on SmackDown, it's going to have people wondering, when's he going to be going back for his championship? So send him to Raw, give him a fresh start, and I'm excited to see what Braun can do on Monday Night Raw. Braun Strowman, my first pick going to Monday nights. Okay, so coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, we have John Morrison. Now, if you've been a fan of the channel for a while, you know how much of a John Morrison fan I am. I absolutely love him. I think he's awesome. Uh, one of the best wrestlers on the roster today. And I was so excited for his return. They spoiled it by having him return backstage. Uh, they I, they should have put him in the Rumble initially, but no. When he was in the Rumble, he got thrown out by Brock in a matter of seconds. This year has not been good for Morrison. Don't even get me started on the Otis stuff. That is the reason I'm trading him to Raw. I'm keeping the Miz on SmackDown, and I'm sending John Morrison to Monday Night Raw to get him the hell away from Otis. And also because I think Morrison... Uh, can be a very good United States champion in the mid card. Uh, John Morrison versus Bobby Lashley is a match that I don't know why, but I, I'm wanting to see it. So I'd love to see Morrison go to Raw, be in the mid card, and dominate. Let's move on to the next pick. Okay, so coming up next, we have another one of my absolute favourite wrestlers. It is Daniel. Brian. I've got Daniel Bryan moving to Raw mainly because what has he been doing on SmackDown? So ever since probably TLC or whenever it was he cut his hair last year, Bryan took on The Fiend in a losing effort. Then he took on Sami Zayn in a losing effort. Then he took on AJ Styles in a losing effort. Bryan hasn't really been doing anything on SmackDown at all. And he hasn't even been there. Now, the reason he hasn't been there is because I believe uh, he's he's had another kid. So, you know, he's staying at home for those, for those reasons, which is absolutely perfectly... Um, 
like fine you know what i mean we we get that <laughs> but for when he does return inevitably i want daniel bryan to go to raw and one it's because you know i love daniel bryan and i want to see him on monday nights and two daniel bryan versus drew mcintyre for the wwe championship sounds amazing uh, if it doesn't happen, obviously we've got Hell in a Cell coming up with Randy taking him on for a third time. And if I'm honest, I don't see Randy putting Drew over three times. Uh, but I don't know if, you know, if, in, a, if in, in an ideal world, in an ideal world, we can get Drew McIntyre versus Daniel Bryan. Uh, even if it's not for the title, I just want to see that match. So Daniel Bryan's going to Monday nights. Next up, we have Baron Corbin, or should I say King Corbin. Now, I think we should ditch the King gimmick, send him back to Raw, and bring back the Lone Wolf. I don't like the Baron Corbin, um, like, character. Uh, it's not even, it's not down to him. I think he plays his part very well. It's just all his feuds bore me. Uh, the feud with Roman, the feud with Matt Riddle. I'm not interested in any of them, and I don't think that's down to him. I think that's down to creative. So I think bring back the Lone Wolf. I really enjoyed the Lone Wolf gimmick. I know a lot of people uh, hated on Corbin back in them days in like 2017. But I really like the Lone Wolf gimmick and I'd like to see it return. So Baron Corbin sent to Raw. Let's move on to the final male pick. And the final pick I have to send to Monday Night Raw from SmackDown is the Celtic warrior, Sheamus. Sheamus returned in January with his old look from 2010. Looks absolutely incredible. And what has he done? Lost to Jeff Hardy. Lost to Big E. Kicked Shorty G in the head a few times. But other than that, he's done absolutely nothing of significance. Now, ideally, I want Sheamus to win the Intercontinental Championship at some point. Because that is the only title Sheamus has never won in WWE. But I also think at this point, he needs a change of scenery. I think, no, send Sheamus to Raw. Even only if it's till, like end of WrestleMania when they do another superstar shakeup, just send him to Raw. And I'm not even going to lie to you. I would really like to see Sheamus versus Lashley or Sheamus take on the Hurt Business because after all, he has the gimmick now of a proper old school Irish brawler. So I would love to see that Sheamus being sent to Monday Night Raw. Let's get into the women's pick for Raw. Okay, so I know I talked about not having NXT in this, but I think this is an exception. Rhea Ripley sent to Monday Night Raw. I mean, she took on Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania. She'd been on Raw before WrestleMania. And realistically, Asuka needs someone to face. Uh, she's beaten absolutely everyone on the Raw roster. Uh, the only person I could possibly think of as a credible uh, opponent is Shayna Baszler, but she's currently uh, in the tag division with Nia Jax, and they're both doing their thing there, and that's quite entertaining. But one-on-one -on -one competition, send Rhea Ripley. Uh, I know NXT should be involved in this draft, if I'm honest. They should be t getting some guys from Raw and SmackDown, considering in the last month alone, they've already traded uh, their former champion, Keith Lee. Like, that's big. They need someone in return, in my opinion. But I'm sending Rhea Ripley to Raw because I think she would be an ideal opponent for Asuka to face. So that is my Raw picks for the draft. Let's see who I'm sending from Monday Night Raw to Friday Night SmackDown. Okay, so number one is Alistair Black. Now, Alistair Black has sort of, he's having a bit of a, a revamp recently. He's got new music, he's heel now, he's got tights. Um, but if I'm honest, what he doesn't really do anything on like Raw. Like he, he's really not been up to much. And I think SmackDown has the more legit roster um, with guys like Matt Riddle, guys like Daniel Bryan, even though I'm sending him to Raw, guys like AJ Styles, Sami Zayn, you know, they've got the more technically gifted wrestlers and Alistair Black versus some of them guys, I think would be fantastic. Like 
Alistair Black versus AJ Styles is a match that I really want to see. So I think sending Black to SmackDown will be the best thing for him to do right now. That's why I'm pulling the trigger on it. Alistair Black, you're going to SmackDown. Moving on to the next. Okay, so next up we have a bit of a, uh, a lost soul recently in WWE. Andrade. Now, I love Andrade. He is one of my favourite wrestlers on the current roster. I feel like I say that about everyone, but honestly, he is. Uh, if you guys have been here for a while, you'll see that last year, I really, really wanted him to win the Money in the Bank ladder match. Um, like, I see Andrade as a main eventer. I honestly do. But he was in a tag team with Angel Garza. Angel Garza is now injured. Andrade's left in limbo again. So, instead of just leaving him there. He hasn't done anything of significance since losing the United States Championship to Apollo Crews. Send him to SmackDown. Let him compete for the Intercontinental title. Like, that would be mad. Like, I love Andrade, and he's proved himself a lot. He's proved himself a guy against guys like Rey Mysterio. I mean, he's beat Rey so many times. Send him to SmackDown. Would love to see Andrade versus Jeff Hardy, Andrade versus Matt Riddle. They're all matches that I'd love to see. So, Andrade, you're going to SmackDown. Next up, we have one that I think everyone has seen coming. Kevin Owens. I've got KO going to SmackDown. One, because he hasn't really got anything else to do on Raw. Since beating Rollins, he hasn't really done anything other than the Kevin Owens show. I know he's been feuding with Alistair Black on and off. Um, but, you know, now he's feuding with The Fiend. I think he needs to go to SmackDown. Um, and honestly, if you look in the grand scheme of things, he's not going to win his feud against The Fiend. So where does that put him next? Well, Sami Zayn's Intercontinental Champion. KO versus Sami Zayn. KO versus Roman Reigns as a transitional feud until we get to the WrestleMania feud, which might be The Rock. It might not. No one knows currently. Uh, it's one of them things that... I believe the draft is mainly for the mid-card, guys. It's mainly for, and this is just my opinion, you can disagree with me, that's absolutely fine, but I think the draft is a time for mid-card wrestlers to go from one show to another, prove themselves against other mid-carders, and win the mid-card championships. Normally, we only get one or two main eventers actually get switched up in the draft, so it's, it's a tricky one. But I've got Kevin Owens going to SmackDown, mainly because I want to see him and Sami Zayn feud one more time and KO grab that IC title. Next up on the draft for SmackDown, we have Buddy Murphy, or should I say, just Murphy. Um, since breaking up with Rollins, I guess you can say, you know, they're not a tag team anymore as of this Monday. Uh, I feel like they want to make them feud, but at the same time, I feel like it would just be a smart decision for Murphy to just go away. Now, people might be asking me, I've seen a lot of people say that Seth Rollins should move. I honestly don't think he should. I think Rollins should stay on uh, Raw. You've got Roman on SmackDown, you've got AJ on SmackDown, you've got all these guys on SmackDown. Raw needs the star power. They've got Randy, Drew, Rollins, Ray. You know, Raw, technically, as much as I don't like to admit it, because actually, recently, I have preferred SmackDown that little bit more, but Raw is the A show. It will always be the A show. Keep Rollins there. Uh, but Murphy, you know, let him go now. He's been the disciple uh, for over half a year. He's done that gimmick. He's played it very well. Now let him go off and be the best kept secret once again. Let him prove himself on SmackDown. And yeah, I don't really have much else to say other than that. I'd love to see Murphy on SmackDown. Let's move into the final male pick. And this final male pick, ladies and gentlemen, is the one, the only, one and only Ricochet. I absolutely love Ricochet. I have no idea why Vince doesn't use him. Ricochet is so damn good at what he does. He's fantastic. He is like the top aerialist in pro professional wrestling in my opinion honestly i know there's other guys like will osprey that come up with him but in my mind ricochet is the top high flyer he's on top he's better than them all so 
Why on earth, since Super Showdown, when he got beat by Lesnar in a matter of seconds, has he been an afterthought? He was in a tag team with Cedric. Cedric was the one that went off. Uh, now he's just sort of on and off feuding with the Hurt Business. He's not really done anything. Send him to SmackDown in the main event, Ricochet versus Roman Reigns. Do you know how much of a good match those two could put together? Honestly, I think it would be fantastic. So I've got Ricochet going to SmackDown. Shake it up a bit. He hasn't done anything pretty much at all of significance this year. Send him to SmackDown. Put him with Roman and watch magic happen. So there you go. That was my final pick for the men. And let's get into my pick for the women. Okay, so my one and only pick from Raw to SmackDown for the women is Mickey James. Now, Mickey James, since her return, has just sort of been disrespected, in my opinion, on Raw. Uh, you know, losing to Asuka when she didn't tap out and all this stuff. You know, there's a lot of things going on. I just don't think people backstage and creative see Mickey James as like a top star anymore. She's a six-time women's champion. She deserves to be a seven-times women's champion. So send her to SmackDown. Uh, let her, you know, bring up, uh, give her wins. No, I'm not going to be like, don't get me wrong. I know she's been putting over a lot of talent, but give her wins, but also let her build up the SmackDown women's division because it hasn't really been anything of significance. It's only been Sasha and Bailey recently. And then when that feud wrapped up, I'd love to see Mickey feud with the winner. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That was my fantasy picks for the WWE Draft 2020. I've been Joe from Joe Talks Wrestling. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of my picks. Let me know your picks in the comment section down below. I'm pretty sure in the real draft, we're going to be getting a lot of more picks than this uh but i've only wanted to do you know 12 in total just because it's nice it's quick it's easy and i can get the main ones out anyways i look forward to seeing you on the draft i will be doing live reactions i've been joe from joe talks wrestling you guys have been awesome please be sure to give this video a like comment and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next video goodbye